The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention, when behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home, for it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. The Gospel of the Lord. I don't know if anyone has been watching the World Cup these last few weeks. I know we're not traditionally very big soccer fans here in the United States, but the World Cup is a big deal. It only takes place every four years, and it's the biggest sporting event in the world. I've been watching a little bit of the games and trying to understand more about it, but I'm nowhere near the fanatic, soccer fanatic, that Father Bart is. Father Bart has been watching it religiously. In fact, I think he is so happy that the World Cup final, which is today at 10 a.m., I'm so, he's so happy he has the early mass today in Newmarket and not the 11 o'clock. I don't think there would be an 11 o'clock mass today if Father Bart had it. And, uh, you know, but, you know, it's amazing, even for a non-soccer fan, it's been really interesting watching the World Cup. It's an amazing event where really the whole, every nation on earth comes together. He places people in Africa, South America, Asia, Europe, North America, every place imaginable. People come together in one place to play a soccer tournament. It really is a big deal. And in a way, it's almost a sign of what St. Paul talks about in our reading today, that God has this desire, this vision, to bring, to gather all the nations together into his kingdom. St. Paul talks about how there was one nation, Israel, who God used to bring about the Messiah, to be the nation that prepared the way for the birth of the Savior. But then when the Savior came, he came not just for Israel, he came for all the nations. Every nation on earth is called to go and worship the newborn Savior. And so it's a vision for us of the way the world should be. All the nations coming into God's kingdom at peace with each other. God does not want nations to be at war with one another. He calls us to live together in peace. Now, if you were going to gather all the nations together, though, the one place you probably would not pick is where they're all gathered, Qatar, this country in the Middle East. It's a a very unlikely candidate to be the host country for the World Cup. In fact, when they were picked a few years ago, there was a lot of questions about how they got picked. Because, first of all, it's 130 degrees in the summer in Qatar. You can't play a soccer game, and that's why they're playing in December this time. But also, quite frankly, there's a whole litany of human rights abuses that are often, often happen in Qatar. I was reading about the uh, state of the church there in Qatar. And there are Catholics in Qatar. They tend to be people who work in the service industry. And they're lured from places like the Philippines or Nigeria to go and work there. And they're promised you know, high wages But when they arrive, very often, sometimes their passports are confiscated. They end up working basically for slave wages. In fact, it was almost slave labor that built some of these soccer stadiums that are now being played in. And it's a real problem. And the the church is allowed to exist. There are Catholic churches in Qatar. But there's incredible restrictions on the faith there. Uh, you, 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 You can only kind of worship in your church. You really can't there cannot be any public display of religion. You certainly can't try to convert someone else to Christianity. 
and, and, and the, the Christians who are there are sort of oppressed in many different ways. So it's not an ideal situation at all. If you were looking at all the places, you wouldn't pick Qatar to be that place. And yet, in a way, you know, God's plans are funny. God always uh, finds a way. And, and you, know, you wouldn't pick Bethlehem either to be the place where the Savior would be born. Bethlehem was this little out-of-the-way place in the middle of nowhere that no one had even heard of. And yet that was the place that God had chosen for the Savior to be born. You, Bethlehem, even though you're the littlest town in Israel, you're going to be the place where Emmanuel, where the Savior is born. And so God's plans are very interesting sometimes. And in our psalm today, we have this vision that God has. He says, the world and all who dwell in it belong to the Lord. And so let us all go up and climb the mountain of the Lord together. All the nations streaming to God's mountain, streaming to Bethlehem to worship the newborn king. What an amazing vision. But you know what's unique about Christianity is that unlike every other religion and philosophy and spiritual practice, which is all about climbing the Lord's mountain, trying to, get to, trying to find God in some way, what's unique about Christianity is the realization we need God to come down to us. God comes down the mountain. He comes from heaven to earth. He takes on our human nature. He's born right in our midst as Emmanuel, God with us. What a beautiful thing. He's born right into a human family. I, I actually have been celebrating this weekend a, a family wedding here at St. Michael's. My cousin got married here at St. Michael's yesterday. And I was, uh, this is actually the second family wedding I've done in, in two months. And the first one was in October. I, it was up in Holton, Maine, way up in uh, the Canadian border. And it's about as far north in Maine as you can get at the at mile 305 on the, on the Maine Turnpike. And uh, I was picking on that cousin because she made me go all the way up to Holton to marry her. But this cousin very nicely said, I'm going to come to St. Michael's. I'm going to get married right here. And we're going to have the reception at the Exeter Inn right across the street. And I've never been to a family wedding that was so easy, where the ceremony was right next door to my house, and the reception was right across the street. And in a way, that's what God does for us. God knows that we can't come to him sometimes. It's too difficult. There's too, there, we have too many anxieties in life that we're overwhelmed, we're hurt, we're broken. And so God, in his great love, says, I'll come to you. I'll be with you. I'll enter right into your life. I'll enter into everything that makes your life human, and I'll be with you. And, you know, having a whole bunch of family over right before Christmas is kind of difficult for a priest in some ways, because family life is messy. Even though the wedding went really well yesterday, it, it's messy. I, I had a, some relatives, unfortunately, Friday night went off, went off uh, the road in the snow, and they, they ended up in the hospital. They're, they're all right, thank God, but I had to go to the hospital Friday night and pick some of them up, and it's kind of a messy situation. Family is always very messy. But you know, the same thing is true of Jesus' family as well. His family life was very messy. We get an image of that today with St. Joseph. He's trying to figure out this messy situation he finds himself in. Um, the, my wife-to-be is with child. I know it's not my child. What do I do? And you see he's wrestling. He's trying to figure out what is the righteous thing to do. I want to follow God's law. I want to be righteous. At the same time, I, I don't want to expose Mary, my wife-to-be, to shame. I, I don't want her, even worse perhaps, to get stoned for adultery. And he comes up with this plan. Okay, I'm going to divorce her quietly. I'm going to send her away. Maybe I'll send her down to her cousin Elizabeth and she can have the baby down there. No one would be the wiser. And from a human point of view, this is wisdom. This is probably the best plan you could come up with to, to fix what's kind of an unfixable situation. Okay, this is probably the best we can come up with in our human wisdom. And yet God's wisdom is always so much greater than our wisdom. And an angel comes to Joseph in a dream and says, no, actually, you're going to err on the side of compassion. You're going to bring Mary into your home, even though you may not understand exactly what's going on here, because this is part of the plan of God. And in our life, too, you know, sometimes we end up in messy situations in life where we don't really know what the right answer is. And, you know, what do we do in situations like that? Do we wait for an angel to appear to us in a dream? I probably wouldn't do that. 
And if you have some crazy dream, don't tell me about it. Don't, don't, I wouldn't necessarily follow it because we're not quite like St. Joseph. But there are ways to discern God's will. We can pray. We can read the scriptures. We can talk to someone that we trust. We talk to a pastor. Talk to, talk to a, a good friend. Someone that we think ha- would give us good advice. There are ways to try to figure out the messiness of our life but to realize that God is okay with the messiness of our life. God enters into all that messiness. He did when he was born into a human family himself and was born in Bethlehem, born in a stable because he didn't didn't even have a home. There was nowhere for them to go. Again, another situation that seemingly was impossible and yet God found a way. Same thing is true in our life. Probably a lot of us have lots of family Lots of relatives coming, streaming to our house perhaps this week. And it will always be messy. I can guarantee you this week will not go according to plan for any of us. Because, hey, that's life. That's family. But God knows that. And God loves that. God loves actually entering into the mess. Because he realizes in the mess, it's, it's in, right there, as close to us as we can be, that, that God is doing his work. Sometimes we look for God way too far afield. We get attracted by things happening in Qatar or far away, and maybe those are exciting, but it's right here in our own hometowns, in our own homes, in our own hearts, where God is doing his work. He is Emmanuel. He is God with us. And so let us trust in him this week, and let us celebrate his birth with joy.